this is uh, day one of my, I'm just going to call it baby blog. It's Thursday, December 26, 2019. There's so much involved in this story, but I'm going to very briefly summarize for you what has happened in the last five, six months. So I am 39 years old. And let me just say that I got married this year in May. I've never been intimate in my life with anyone. I, I've been a virgin all this time. When I got married, then that's when I started becoming intimate, of course, with my husband. And um, I've heard stories. Like, I've actually believed that people my age, um, it's like extremely hard for you to get pregnant. And, and I, you know, because they throw you all these like statistics, they say things like, you know, by the time you hit 35, you have a 40% chance of getting pregnant. I mean, that's a low, that's like less than 50%. So, and 50% is always like a hit and miss type of thing. When you hit 40, it's like 25 or 15% or some ridiculous number. But of course, you know, you think like you want to have a baby someday, you want to have that family and you waited all this time. After my very first cycle, we got pregnant. It is not impossible to get pregnant at my age. I got married in the beginning of May, got pregnant in the beginning of June, somewhere around there. Um, the most bothersome symptom was like sensitive breasts. Actually, that was about it. I didn't really have any other symptoms. <laughs> Um, I probably felt a little nauseous, but it wasn't anything like, it was nothing really. And then, um, so when I missed my period, I was like, okay, I got, <laughs> I got a test. I believe baby was seven weeks, um, that I was pregnant, but it was actually a partial molar pregnancy. And, um, I, of course I ended up losing baby because at that point, you know, um, nothing could really be done. Uh, so my body expelled baby, um, on the day of my DNC, uh, cause my doctor suggested I get a DNC to make sure all this stuff is out. I mean, when you have a, a miscarry, I mean, you don't really want to get up and say, okay, hey, let's try again. Um, I definitely wasn't like that, but in the molar pregnancy, you have to take tests and because in a molar pregnancy, it could turn out to be cancerous if you're not careful, uh, if you don't monitor it and stuff like that. So um, they had to do draw blood for me like every single week until my HCG levels dropped. And then they had to draw blood every week or every month rather for the next three months. And my doctor, um, she said, well, technically uh, people with molar pregnancies, they don't we wait until at least at least six months after the initial drop. Um, we wait at least six months until you, you know, until we clear you. But um, because you're older in age, and I know you and your husband want to try for a baby, um, we'll just because your your HCG levels were really good and they drop fast. You only have to wait for three months. So we had to wait actually the total of five months and then um but even before that during that process they found ovarian cysts on my um ovaries or one of them on my one of my ovaries and then what happened was I went into surgery uh which kind of delayed stuff that's why the five month wait um otherwise you could have tried maybe in October but uh so uh, I had to go through surgery um, which was in the beginning of November of this year. And then, um, it took me about two weeks to recover. And then once I, uh, visited my doctor again, I healed up very good. My HCG levels were amazing. She says, you can try for a baby. In the beginning of December, my husband and I, we decided to try for a baby. And, <laughs> Uh, we, you know, I did it this time to where I wasn't like haphazardly trying for a baby. Like I, 
I technically told my husband like, okay, this is when I'm going to ovulate and, you know, let's get busy <laughs> during this time because my period came three days late. Um, I don't know if it was because of the surgery. I'm not usually irregular. I'm usually like right on the dot. I have an app called Flow that I monitor my menstrual cycle but for some reason i was three days late so i figured like oh my gosh what does this mean you know <laughs> um but i think it probably was the surgery and just everything going on in my life you know the stress and you know all the stuff that i had to deal with with the molar and with now the surgery and you know that could always like affect everything so we tried you know and i was well with whatever outcome it would be um, for this time around. Uh, but like, like maybe about like five days ago, um, I noticed that my breasts were getting tender again. And, um, you know, the one thing you do is you Google it. <laughs> is this an early pregnancy syndrome and it is and it was like it was definitely this the the first symptom of mine when i was pregnant the first time and so uh, my breasts were kind of sensitive you know and my husband would like even rub against them you know not even trying to touch them or anything i'd be like ooh, ooh. <laughs> so that kind of got me thinking, well, maybe I'm pregnant. As the days go by, I got not only sensitive breasts, but um, I think I've experienced so much more this time. Like um, I, I was definitely tired uh, the days leading up to Christmas. Um, I also experienced uh, mood swings. Like I was like particularly irritable and I wasn't trying to be. Like it was Christmas. Like why would I want to be like, Scrooge or the Grinch <laughs> on Christmas. No, not me, right? I, and I tried to like put it under caps, but there was one time I was like, I was, you know, we were going out for Christmas. It was actually on Christmas yesterday and we were going out and I could not find my blouse or these particular um, tights that I, I wear. And I made my husband dump out like three basketfuls of laundry on the bed and find them. <laughs> you know, my husband was very patient. And then I, and then, and then I, I apologized to him and I asked for his forgiveness. And I said, why are you patient? And he goes, because it's Christmas. <laughs> and so anyway, that was, that was weird. Okay. That was just not me. I started to test though. I started to like, you know, Throughout those days, started to test. Um, it got to the point where I ordered another kit from Amazon, like a th just a just a pregnancy test kit with three of them in there, and um, I used up the two of them, and all of them were negative. And you know, um, whenever you test and you get a negative, it it doesn't even matter if you're not ready yet. When you get that negative, you kind of be like, ah, oh, you know, you're like, ah. Oh and stuff but but i had to remind myself that i'm not in that zone yet like my next period is so far away um you know and just chill lexi because there will come a day where you can test and you'll know for sure <laughs> but i was like 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 i don't know 10 days before my period 12 days before my period, I was already trying to test to see if I was pregnant. So, um, so I just let it go and stuff. And I end up only having one test left. Um, and so I think what happened was maybe the reason why my husband was so nice to me is because I tried hiding that last test one because I've always wanted to just surprise him, you know, with a positive test. I did that the other time. In fact, I was, I was, uh, I had a positive test and I waited till Father's Day, which was the week after, literally to tell him that, hey, you're going to be a dad. And I thought it would have been perfect. Um, but anyway, like, so I was going to like surprise him and stuff like that. And, um, but I think he found it. I think he found it somewhere in my drawers 
while he was trying to look for the blouse that I needed to wear on Christmas. I think that's why he was nice, to be honest. It was Christmas. Yesterday, I was really tired, but um, more than that, um, I started to feel um, back pain. Um, I had, it wasn't like sore a sore back, it was more like twinges. And that was a symptom that I had like an advanced stage of early pregnancy, I guess you can say toward my sixth or seventh week, um, I started to have twinges, but now I'm starting to feel like twinges in my back. And it's kind of a weird feeling. It kind of feels like heat intensifies into like a blob of pain and then it goes away. And it doesn't really last no more than a few seconds. That's my definition of a twinge. And then today I started to feel it a little bit like on and off for like maybe five or 10 minutes. Um, and I've, I've had been feeling a little crampy in the, in the front. Now here's the thing. Okay. Some people might tell you like, okay, Lexi, but that might be like PMS, um, or, you know, just symptoms you have when your period's approaching, which my period actually is supposed to scheduled to be beginning New Year's Eve. These are symptoms that I've read up on that are not, I've never experienced before, but listen to this, okay? I hardly get PMS symptoms. I don't get them. I, I don't get crampy before my period. Um, I don't even get tender breasts at all. Like I really thought it was very unusual the first time I was pregnant when I had tender breasts, but I don't usually get tender breasts before my period so for all these things to happen <laughs> before my period you know which is like maybe six days away is kind of unusual okay I'm just saying it's unusual I'm not saying these are whatever but I've been getting tinges on, on my back it's been you know progressively intensifying um and but I mean, today, other than the twinges and the little cramping, I don't feel tired, you know, um, I didn't feel sick at all today. Um, so I don't know, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Um, but I am compelled to maybe take another test. Regardless what the, what, what the, what the situation is, I'm probably going to wait till Saturday, but if I do Friday, I'll do another video. <laughs> um, that is if I feel like my symptoms have increased. Okay. Um, so anyway, if I do do it, then I'll do a video. But if not, I am for sure going to get like one of those legit clear blue easy type of like the three in one kits, you know, where you like triple check your, <laughs> your, your thing. And I'm going to get that and I'm going to, uh, do it on New Year's Eve. And whether it's positive or negative, I'm going to know on Christmas, on New Year's Eve. But if it is positive, it'd be a good thing to kind of surprise my husband. Um, <laughs> it'll be a good thing to surprise my husband for the new year, 2020. So anyway, that is just the update. I know it's been long and my videos tend to be long, but this is my journey. Just thought I'd do this video, but again, it's December 26th. My period is six days away. Um... And I'll let you guys know. But that's my story.